So My Time at Santa Rock just released and there aren't any major ways, secret ways that you can get a lot of money really quickly. But there are some best practices, so in this video we're gonna go through all of those. Now the very first one is basically by doing commissions. Now every day you can get one commission, so just go to the Commerce Guild's house, whatever that's called, and just go to the board and get a commission. Now. At the beginning of the game, you are only going to get access to one commission per day. But keep getting them and keep finishing them every day and you're going to get a lot of relationship points and a lot of gold. Now at the start, there are basically for one star commissions, you're only going to get about 200 goals. But for example, at three stars, you are already going to get 2000 goals. So this is going to run up really quickly by just doing this every day. And the second way, a really easy one, is just by completing missions. Now, don't just complete the main campaign missions. They are going to reward you with a steady stream of goals, but also do the side missions. Side missions are also really interesting because one day, well, they are going to teach you a lot about the game and they're also going to give you a lot of relationship points and about 200, 300 goals per mission. So just keep doing them every time you see this little question mark pop up in the minimap at the bottom right. So just go to that location, go talk to the NPC, get the mission completed, and well, you're going to make a lot of relationship points and goals. The knowledge tree is just like in Porsche, once again, a really good way to get some extra money. Now I already found three skill points that you should really take early on in the game because they are going to run up a little bit. Now the first one is the quality bonus knowledge, which is going to give you plus 10% commission rewards if you turn in a commission item that's higher quality than asked. Now early on this isn't going to mean much because well you, your skill level is going to be low, your machines are going to be low, your tools are going to be green, so don't worry about that just yet. But later on, well, you are going to make a lot better tools, better machines, and you're going to produce better quality. So once again, you are gonna go get paid for the better quality that you are going to deliver. The shard topper knowledge is going to be one of those that pays off once again in the long run. So you're gonna get plus five commission reward bonus if you're ranked in the top three at the Commerce Guild. Now every few days, in game days, they are actually going to reevaluate all the builders in Sandrock and they are going to place them kind of on a ranking. If you are one of the top three, you're gonna get extra plus five commission rewards. So that really makes it worth it in the long run. Now the quick delivery knowledge is going to be more interesting at the very start because you're going to get plus 5 commission rewards bonus if you complete a commission the same day it was issued. So basically if you turn in the desired item the same day that you took the commission, well, you're going to get paid a lot more. At the start of the game, your main source of revenue are going to be basically the commissions and the main missions. But after that, you may want to start selling some stuff. And you should basically never sell some raw resources. Now these are three different items that you can actually create at the workstation really easily, no use of stamina, and you can just sell them for a lot higher price than the raw resources. So right now I have the stone throw, the grinding saws, and the tin threads. These are things that you can make from the very start of the game and they will sell a little bit more than the base resources. Now in the long run there are going to be a few more of these things that are going to pop up, but I will make more separate videos for those whenever they show up. Uh, as I progress through the game and you know the game actually gets updated. And the one thing you should always watch out for when selling items is the market price multiplier. Now every day the market price multiplier is going to be changed so you can just go to a vendor and you can just check out whatever it is right now. So basically if for example your item is 10% and the market price multiplier is 70% then you are only going to get 7 gold instead of 10. But if it's 130 well then you're going to get 13 gold instead of 10 which is perfect. So that's what we're going for. We want that market price multiplier to be as high as possible. Now in Porsche, it went about down to 70% and max was like 125, 130. So, you know, don't really wait for like a magic 150. That's not gonna be there. Maybe that's going to be different in Sandrock, but still, I think selling about at least at like 120, that's a sweet spot already. Now, if you are selling items to vendors and the vendor is actually not capable of buying any, you can actually just see that they have a maximum budget of goals to spend on items that you are selling. And whenever that is gone, just move on to the next vendor. The main street of Santa Rock has tons of vendors. Just you know, pass all by all of them and just sell everything you can that they will accept. But those were the best main practices that you can use to make some money steadily in my time at Sandrock. 
Next we should talk about all the different scrap types that you can find in the desert of Sandrock. I will talk about that in this video right here, but don't click on it just yet. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on everything Sandrock related, and I'll see you over there.